Some of my favorite Commodore games were the Epics Games series. This included games like Summer Games, Summer Games 2, Winter Games, World Games, California Games, and the like. All of these were really great games that you could just play for hours. Fortunately, my kids are lucky enough to have a dad that makes them play these games. So we've actually had some pretty good battles over the last couple years playing some of the Epics classics on the Commodore 64. One thing that I've noticed is over the years my ability to push the button at some freakish speed or wrangle the joystick back and forth really, really fast is, is not quite what I remembered it to be. Not that my kids have been able to beat me at it, but it's certainly not as much fun as I kind of recall it being. So I was thinking, what could I do that would level the playing field with my younger kids who have reflexes that are probably a little quicker than mine? The obvious solution to my problem is I need to cheat. So what I decided to do was build an auto fire circuit. So essentially what this is, is a 555 timer that generates a square, ray, square wave pulse that goes to the 64. This will simulate the button press. One other small note is I've got a potentiometer here that allows me to adjust the rate of fire. Some games are going to be able to detect a much quicker rate of fire than others. There certainly is a maximum that the 64 could detect, but it's also going to be somewhat limited by the program. Basic programs, for example, will not be able to, to detect as many button presses as a machine language program. I've got here with switch number one, the ability to turn it on and off. And then here, I've got a 4520, which is a 4-bit counter. Actually, it's two 4-bit counters, but this is the chip that I have, so we're just going to have to use it. What this allows me to do is to slow that rate down just enough that I can notice with an LED how fast it's actually running. So the LED will not flash in sync with each pulse, but basically every third or fourth pulse, depending on where I want to connect it up to the 4520. The 4520 is a CMOS chip, which takes a lot less power. Um, that's important because I want this to be powered off of the 64. And you'll see, based on the, uh, the Commodore 64 schematic, that it does provide a 5-volt source. And it can only provide about 100 milliamps of current. The downside to this is that most of your joysticks don't expose that wire. The way this is designed, there's a connector that goes to the 64 and then a connector that goes to the joystick. And pushing the button on the rapid-fire box, if you will, will start the auto-fire. I don't like this because it's an external box and my kids will probably see it and it's a little bit clunky. So if I could embed all of this into the joystick and maybe a hidden switch, that would be pretty cool. So if I were to embed this into a joystick, I would need to hide this knob. I could either include or not include the LED circuit, kind of depends on, on how the joystick is made. One big challenge with that, however, is powering it from the 64 with a joystick, like a commercial joystick, is going to be difficult because most of the joysticks that I've seen don't bring out the 5 volt wire because there's just no need to do that. It's not necessary for a joystick to operate. If I were to embed this circuit into a joystick itself, I would need to include some sort of power source because I'm not going to be able to get it easily out of the 64 without an extra wire. And that might be noticed by my kids. So let's go ahead and prototype this on a breadboard. We'll play with it and make sure it works as expected. And then I will figure out how best to conceal this circuit so that I have an advantage when playing some of these games with the kids. So here is our circuit on a breadboard. I went ahead, built everything as best I could. The only potentiometer that I could find is this big monster right here. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of looking, probably online, see if I can find one that's a little bit better, a little bit more compact. My goal is to build this circuit inside the joystick, conceal it such that it's not obvious. Obviously we do have the LED here and we will um, you know, maybe make that in a place, put it in a place where it's not quite as obvious or you can hide it with your finger or something. We'll figure that out here in a little bit. 
Remember this entire circuit is powered from the Commodore 64 so there's no need for any external power supply. So I'm going to go ahead and just push the button. You can see, hopefully, let me turn the light off, hopefully you can see there that our LED is flashing based on the setting of the potentiometer. So if I turn this, you can see. So turning that potentiometer allows us to adjust the rate at which the button is being pressed. Okay, so we're going to go practice one event. And we're going to, of course, practice the javelin. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one time. Pushing the button the best I can. And moving the joystick. Of course, I faulted, but let's just see how far it goes. And that actually wasn't too bad. Wow, pretty impressive. But now, I've got the button engaged. And it might be a little bit hard to see, but he accelerates significantly faster. And of course the button press automatically switches. So I will turn it off. You can certainly tell by the clicks of the joystick that I'm really not having to do a whole lot here to get the, the, uh, the guide to run really, really fast. <laughs> yeah, I've never got 99 by doing it the old-fashioned way. After digging around in my pile of old joysticks, I found this. To be honest, I don't know that I've ever used it, but the thing that I find really fascinating about this one is it's got two buttons. So maybe what I could do is use one for the standard fire button, and if you hold the second one, it goes into auto fire. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Figure out where to mount the knob or the potentiometer so I can do some adjusting. And this might be the winner. So I want to make sure that it works, and then we'll tear it apart and see if I can easily modify this. So here we go. Here's the inside of the joystick. I went ahead and disconnected the ground, which goes to the stick itself. But there's a lot of room in there. So it looks like both buttons are wired to the same button on the Commodore, which is good. So what I'm going to do is clean this up really good, disconnect this button, and I want to make this button here our rapid fire button that enables our circuit. There is a lot of room in here. I'm going to have to get a little bit creative on how we solder that board, and we might even have to make it two boards, but we'll get it to fit in there somehow. Okay, after looking for a joystick wire that brought out the 5 volt pin from the 64. I've basically given up. So what I did was I used a 9 volt battery with a small Zener diode circuit to uh, basically give me 5 volts. Obviously the ground comes out so we're good with that. So it'll work but I'm gonna have to put that 9 volt battery inside the joystick. And so of course it's a Radio Shack 9 volt that I have left over from the old bankruptcy sale. But I'm going to have to get that in the joystick. So I did a quick test fit, and it does fit in there. And we're just going to have to go with this. So I went on Amazon and found a potentiometer that looks like it'll fit nicely. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole through this. There's an aluminum cover, as you can see here. So I'm going to try to get through that without damaging it too much. And get a hole so this potentiometer will be easy to control. All right, there we go. There's the final fit. The nut and washer are on, and you can see underneath that it is locked into position. So I can solder the wires from here, and we're good to go. Okay, we're going to put the LED right down in here, I think. Okay, we got the LED mounted. I just stuck it in there just so we can get an idea how it looks. So there's our knob for uh, enhanced firing, regular fire, rapid fire, LED will light up so we know it's active and the speed of the LED will tell us how quickly it's operating. Not bad. Okay, now we're to the part where we get to build the circuit. The challenging thing about this particular circuit is there's a lot of components on a pretty small board. 
I decided to go against the two board idea, mainly just for space. I think that would have probably taken more space than, than even one board. So I'm going to use this board. I'm going to build this thing as tight as I can, and hopefully it works. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this is one of the harder ones just because of all the connections and the, and the very tight space. But if we're lucky, it'll work. Okay, so I've got our circuit hooked up. Just sliced in temporarily, make sure everything works. And look at that. So let's go ahead and get this thing put back together. Well, it turns out that putting this thing back together was just about as hard as building the circuit. But after probably a good 20 to 25 minutes of moving and maneuvering some of the components, I, I did finally get it back together. So let's try this thing out. So here's the final product. Not going to lie, it was a pain in the butt. I put it together, forgot to connect the ground wire, had to take it back apart. I used a really small circuit board because there's not a lot of room, as you saw. Uh, the battery is pretty substantial, obviously, um, but it's what I had, so I you know, didn't have a lot of choice but to use it. And yeah, it's a tight, tight fit. Uh, making the wires long enough but not too long was a challenge. But nonetheless, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Honestly, it almost looks like it was made that way. Almost. We're going to call this complete. The last step, of course, is to bring my son in here and let's see who wins this time. All right, go first. Push the button real fast. Man, how do you do that so fast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my turn. <laughs> what do you think no. of this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can get it. How are you going that fast? Huh? You're not even cleaning the button. Yeah, I did. Look. That's... This is shady. Not shady. <laughs> no, you're not clicking the button. No, you, you clicking it. Oh, well. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Alright, final one. I'm going to kick your butt. Oh, mm -hmm. go fast, go fast. Why is it a blinking light? Huh? What, what, why is there a thing? What's the what light from? Hey, get away from my what? joystick! <laughs> <laughs> this is Look at that world record! <laughs> this game's stupid. <laughs> you cheater. So I'm going to say mission accomplished. I hope you enjoyed watching the video today on how to build a rapid fire circuit for your Commodore 64. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this sort of content, I uh, would certainly appreciate it if you subscribed. And thanks for watching. I hope you'll come hang out in the Commodore room again with us real soon.